Hi, I'm Anne Gaviola. Welcome to The Peak on Global, where we break down what is trending in the business world and what you need to know to stay ahead of the curve. And joining me now is Brett Chang from The Peak Podcast. Welcome, Brett. Hey, Anne. Great to be with you. Let's start things off with a look at a trend that's intensified this spring and summer. So climate activists, they've long had big corporations in their sights, but increasingly they're targeting ultra wealthy individuals for their outsized impact on the planet with their private jets, their mansions all around the world and their super yachts. What are your thoughts, Brett? You know, I think it's important that we talk about this. I think the, there is a disproportionate impact that both large multinational corporations and ultra wealthy individuals have on the climate crisis. But it's not just a question of climate. It's a question about how do we create a more fair economy that works for all. And a big part of that is reducing inequality. Reducing inequality would not only, one, hopefully bring down the emissions that the ultra wealthy are contributing to, but it would also create a more equal and fair economy for working people with greater distribution of wealth. So I think it's important to have this conversation. And it's probably good that we finally are. Yeah, the inequality piece is such an is, is central to all of this, although some people act like it is peripheral. Um, and to give people an idea of just how outsized uh, the contributions of the 1% of the 1% are, I interviewed Oxfam this week, and their research shows that the 125 richest billionaires each emit more than a million times more carbon than the average person in the bottom 90%. That is glaring. And every expert I spoke with for my piece, this includes analysts, authors, academics, economists, they told me that as unpopular as this opinion may be, the price on pollution, the price we have on carbon is too low and needs to be higher. They also said, and this touches on that inequality piece, they said there's a pressing need for a worldwide, a global tax on the ultra wealthy. And I'm talking about people whose net worth exceeds $100 million, okay? Just, just so that people understand what we're talking about. That money could be used towards things like greening our economies. And I totally get it, Brett. I mean, private jets are an easy target. And I know it would probably be chaos if people like Taylor Swift, even Elon Musk, maybe Beyonce, if those people took regular flights. But there are all kinds of you know, concerns beyond safety. And I think it is important that there's a collective understanding that the ultra wealthy bear an outsized responsibility and impact when it comes to all things related to the environment. You know, I understand the practicality of it all, where I don't think we should say to Taylor Swift that, no, you can't fly a private jet. I'm not sure Taylor Swift is the one call for here. You've got someone like Jeff Bezos, who says that he is dedicated to fixing and solving climate change and the climate crisis. In fact, he named an arena where the Seattle Kraken play in, the Climate Pledge Arena, which is his charity, yet he owns the largest super yacht in the world. And so there's that glaring hypocrisy on those two sides. Broadly speaking, which I think is probably the important conversation that you were getting to, is that when you do things like impose a tax on the super wealthy and you make sure that they pay their fair share, that doesn't mean we have to make them poor. That simply means we have to take a bigger chunk of their pie. And they earn so much and they have control of so many resources that that cut, they might not even notice, yet it's so meaningful to all of us. Yes, one, it means that we can invest in clean technology to electrify our economy and to try to reduce carbon emissions at a global level. But two, it also means that we can invest in important public services that would just make life easier and fairer for working people. So when you look at it holistically, I think it's very obvious that, yes, we're, the ultra wealthy are not paying their fair share in this country and really any country in the world and that they have to be brought in line with what everyone else is paying. And, uh, and I think that's really important. And I think it's some time we had that conversation. Yeah, and it's great that we're having that conversation here. Our second topic uh, is about Canada's corporate ethics watchdog. It is investigating several retailers over allegations of forced labor in company supply chains and operations. Some of the names being scrutinized probably won't come as a surprise, like Walmart, which obviously carries a huge number of items which are designed to be affordably priced. Uh, but people may be shocked to know that Hugo Boss is among the names under investigation. This isn't a fas fast fashion brand. What are your thoughts, Brett? Well, I guess on Hugo Boss, I'm not particularly surprised considering their history. But if you look at the fashion industry at large and really any supply chain, you're always going to find issues of supply chain. And it's not just supply chain in terms of what we've been talking about lately, which is the inability to get products from places like China to Western shores. But the bigger issue of the actual human labor involved in that, in most countries, their standards for labor are much lower than what we would expect here. And I think what is lower than people would expect from a human decency perspective. And so when you dig into that, you find a lot of issues. And that is what is making prices items so cheap here for us in Canada and around the world. I think you're absolutely right that, again, to that hypocrisy point, when you look at luxury brands that are exploiting labor, that is just 
a glaring hypocrisy that needs to be addressed. But really, I think we should look at all brands and dig into those supply chains and see, hey, are they actually operating with the type of labor standards and human decency being provided to these workers that we would expect here at home? It doesn't necessarily mean that the wages have to be the same, but the conditions have to be good. They have to be earning fair wages in their country, and they have to be entitled to the same protections that I think we would just generally respect for any human being or any worker. Yeah, there are some great brands that are really good about transparency and people have the ability to research, but they can also push for more transparency. And I I feel like that's where kind of the momentum is heading. In our third story, uh, it's a bit of a different turn here. So there was a judge in the U.S. that ruled last week that a lawsuit against Burger King can go ahead. It's a class action lawsuit accusing the chain of false advertising when it comes to its Whoppers. So apparently they look twice as big as they are in real life in their ads. Burger King is facing this type of legal problem. It is similar to what McDonald's and Taco Bell were accused of in court. My analogy, though, here is that it's kind of like doping. Um, Just because everybody does it in sports doesn't mean it shouldn't be cracked down on. Thoughts, Brett? Well, you know, this is a tough one, right? Because I think it's unrealistic for people to have the expectation that they're going to get the exact same fast food item that they saw on TV in terms of the look uh, of it. I I think that's just an impossible standard to hold. If you've cooked anything before, you know that the actual idea of what you're getting versus the output is usually a bit different. It's hard to replicate that unless you're going to some of the best restaurants in the world. So I think it's a bit of an unrealistic expectation, but you actually may absolutely make a good point that there is a lot of false advertising out there, which is misleading to consumers. I think it's probably much worse in the US where this lawsuit is than here because of the standards, but we should absolutely crack down on that wherever we see it. Yeah, and I'll be the first to admit, I love photographing food. There are definitely ways to work the angles, the lighting, the placement of things to kind of zhuzh them up. Um, There are a lot of variables too, because you know, the fast food that you you go in to get is assembled by humans and they're using things like imprecise measurements. You know, half a handful of lettuce really varies depending on whose hand you're talking about. So I'll just say this is an excuse, uh, not an excuse, I should say, just an explanation. I still think false advertising is out of control and there's a threshold and i think once you cross that threshold it's too much anyway thank you as always for your time and your keen insight brett i gotta say it's been a pleasure doing the peak on global with you and with my amazing team of colleagues who work behind the scenes there are a lot of them they're super talented they make this possible i appreciate you i appreciate all of you thank you ann and thank you to all of the support you bet. And you can get all your daily business news with the Peak Daily Podcasts. They're available for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you find your favorite podcasts.